Hello my friends, today we will take a look at Fieldworld LUT 7, 7 inch ultra bright touchscreen monitor mainly intended for on camera use. I've been using on camera monitors for a long time, but there were always some compromises with the monitors that I've used. LUT 7 offers a lot of great features such as 2200 nit brightness, touchscreen, ambient light sensor and lookup table support. In this video we will take a look at the performance of this monitor with Panasonic GH5 and Sony A7 III. As the name suggests, LUT7 is 7 inch monitor which is my most favorite size for on camera monitor. With 7 inch screen you can easily check the focus and set the exposure. It is on the larger side but it really makes the shooting much more convenient for me. It uses 7 inch 8 bit IPS screen with 1920 by 1200 resolution, 323 pixel per inch density and 160 degrees viewing angle. It is 16 by 10 screen, I'm not sure why, but it is not that big of a deal. One of the main highlights of this monitor is the 2200 nit brightness which is extremely bright. On camera monitors usually output about 450 nits, so it is indeed a huge difference. The difference is mostly visible outdoors, where 450 nit monitor can be generally used, but you will get a lot of glare in strong sunlight and you will probably have to use sunshade. FW279 that I have used before also has 2200 nit brightness and I can say that it is very useful especially in the summer. The image is very detailed thanks to high pixel density, so checking the focus and getting representative output is not a problem. It uses REC 709 color standard and it is also calibrated in factory, which means that what you see on the screen should match the real output and I am happy with the colors out of the box. The first significant advantage of the LUT7 in comparison with FW279 is built in ambient light sensor on the top of the monitor. 2200 nit brightness is very useful outdoors, but indoors it is not ideal, so with the FW279 I had to adjust the brightness manually. Ambient light sensor can do that for me, which is very convenient. For my purposes it works well enough. Of course you can set the brightness yourself if you wish to do so. That is also much easier thanks to the touchscreen, but we will get to that later. It is made of plastics, but the build quality is still fine, especially for the price, which is in my opinion very reasonable, so I'm okay with the build quality. Regarding the inputs, HDMI input supports 4K Ultra HD up to 30 frames per second. I have tested it with 4K 60p on Panasonic GH5 and it will still give you 30p output, so it can be used for 4K 60p without major issues. 4K DCI is supported up to 24p. If you want to use SDI input, there is the S version which supports 1080p signal up to 60p. There is also headphone output jack which is especially useful if you have camera without headphone output such as Sony A6400 or A6600. Regarding the powering options, LUT7 has two integrated slots for Sony L batteries. One 6600 mAh F970 battery can power the monitor for 2 and something hours, so you can get about 4 to 5 hours with two F970 batteries. That is excellent battery life, but the whole package will get quite heavy of course. I also like to use just two small 2200 mAh batteries, which gives me nice flat profile, with about 1.5 hour of running time. It is also possible to power the monitor using 12V 3A AC adapter. Here I have the official adapter which is my preferred power source for studio work. A huge change in comparison to FW279 is the touchscreen. User interface used to be a weakness of every single budget friendly monitor, but it is fortunately no longer the case. It has very well organized main menu which is accessible by double pressing on the screen. Here you have access to all of the assist options, marking options, image settings, histograms, waveforms and so on. If you swipe from the bottom edge you can access handy shortcuts. What I really like is that you can manually adjust the brightness simply by moving your finger on the left side on the screen. On the right side you can adjust the volume. Overall I think that this is very good interface, the icons are large enough and it is very easy to navigate. 
LUT7 also has a variety of useful features and aids that can help you with your production. There is a focus speaking which is quite reliable and together with the resolution it makes the manual focusing pretty easy and you can also zoom in for very precise focusing. The zebra stripes with adjustable level of overexposure are also available. Histogram is also available and it is quite accurate. Another feature that can help you set the correct exposure are false colors, although I personally don't use those. A big feature on the LUT7 are the waveforms, which is the most advanced way to judge the colors, so if you know how to use those, those can be very useful. Another great feature is the possibility to load lookup tables directly to the monitor. You can simply copy the LUTs on the SD card and load them from there. It is compatible with .cube files. You can also use built-in LOC to 709 LUT, but I prefer using my own LUTs. This is very useful for shooting flat or lock. There are three quarter inch mounts on the monitor for the mounting. The monitor comes with tilting arm, which can be used for mounting the monitor on the hot shoe of your camera. It is very high quality, but I prefer using a simple friction mount to keep the size and the weight down. I mainly use this monitor with Sony a7 III. Sony cameras unfortunately don't support information display over HDMI in 4K, so it is not possible to see the settings or focus point on external monitor. It is not a fault of this monitor of course, just keep it in mind when using it with Sony. I also use it with Panasonic GH5 with no issues at all. You can choose whether you want to see the settings on external monitor or just clean output. 4K 60p also works despite that it is not officially supported, so it works great with my GH5. Overall I can say that the LUT7 is by far the best on-camera monitor that I have used so far. It fixes all of the issues that I had with FW279, but it still keeps all of its strengths. Especially the touch interface is a huge upgrade and it makes use of this monitor much easier. Auto dimming sensor is also very useful in changing light conditions. 2200 nit brightness is great, the image quality and the colors are very good. If you shoot flat a lot, option to load your own LUTs is also very useful. Basically the only slight negative are thicker bezels and the thickness of the monitor, but it is not terrible by any means. I use this monitor on a daily basis and I am very happy with it, so I can highly recommend it. So that's it for this video, thank you for watching, I hope that you liked this video and that you found it to be useful, stay tuned for more videos and maybe consider subscribing if you don't want to miss my future content, I appreciate your feedback in form of thumbs up or thumbs down, if you would like to ask anything or share your opinion please do so in the comment section and see you next time.